Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Last week I told you about the five things I most enjoy about being a PhD student. You can find that video up here. And so it's only fair that this week I tell you about the five things I most dislike about being a PhD student. Let's dive right into it. And number one is stress. Being a PhD student is stereotypically a very stressful experience, and this is true in real life as well, at least to some degree. This, in some way, mirrors the top of the list from last week, which was the freedom of pursuing your own research project. Now, that gives you an incredible and amazing flexibility, but it also comes with its own dose of stress. You are in charge of your project, which means you are responsible for it and that is a huge responsibility. That's because being in charge comes with being responsible for the progress of the project itself. You don't have someone else telling you what to do, so you have to keep yourself self-motivated, which might be difficult. You also don't have many intermediate checkpoints, but you still have a few, so it's quite easy to fall behind for an extended amount of time and then having to catch up in a very short time, which could be incredibly stressful. This often happens right before the most important exams at the end of the first and the third year and before submitting your thesis. I myself am right in the middle of creating the report for the end of the third year exam and I can tell you it is a very intensive and stressful process, but I'm managing. At number two is the lack of a clear path forward. To be clear, I'm not referring to, for example, a lack of guidance from your supervisor or anything like that. It's more an intrinsic problem that has to do with doing research. Doing research is a little bit like driving in the fog. You don't really know where your destination is or what it looks like, but you have to keep pushing through until you reach it. This, in turn, means that you are forced to make a lot of decisions about your method, your parameters, your observables, and so on, without actually knowing the effect of those decisions. This often forces you to go back, change your decision, see what the new outcome will be, and then decide which path to take. Basically, you are doing the same work over and over again, which can be quite annoying in the long term. And number three is money. Sure, nobody starts a PhD to become rich, but it is a real struggle for many people. I am very fortunate to be fully funded by my department for my PhD. Even with that funding, the situation is not great because Oxford is the most unaffordable city in the whole UK and more generally, university cities tend to be more costly than average. In fairness, universities do offer a lot of opportunities to PhD students to earn some extra money. I myself tutor in my department and I am a junior dean at my college, which is super helpful. However, this means that PhD students often work two, three or even four jobs at the same time, including their primary full-time research job being their PhD. This is hardly an ideal setup and has two main drawbacks. It makes juggling your academical, professional and social life quite tricky and, in general, it's not a setup that most people are looking forward to. I am personally quite happy at the moment with the situation that I have regarding money and employment. However, if I look at myself in five years, I definitely would not want to be working for jobs. At number four, we have opportunity cost. Now, I feel this one is something that most people fail to take into consideration, but it is worth remembering that time is indeed a resource and a very valuable one. Admittedly, this does not apply if you're looking to continue your career into academia, as having a PhD is a basic requirement for all academic positions. However, if you, like me, are thinking about pursuing your career outside of academia, you have to be more careful in your considerations. Pursuing a PhD is a huge investment in both time and resources. The same time and resources could have been spent in furthering your career after starting a job right after your undergraduate degree. It is a hugely complicated topic, partly because of the unknowns. You can know before starting a PhD whether or not it's the best choice for you, even in terms of career development. There is a note, however. Some jobs are only open to people with PhDs. So there is another, very small group of people 
for which a PhD has no opportunity cost at all, even if they don't want to go into academia. If you're looking for a position such as applied scientist or applied researcher, then a PhD is surely the correct path for you. And then there are people like me, who are quite sure they don't want to go into academia, but are not quite sure what to do outside of academia. For us, the decision is very much not clear cut. So the important thing is that we are enjoying our time as PhD student, which if you've seen the previous video, I'm certainly am. And finally, a number five, a topic that is very closely related to the previous one. What comes next? What comes at the end of the PhD? I think this shows that I am quite worried about it, but I still have one and a half years, so I try not to think too much about it. However, it is a real problem for those people like me who are seeking to find employment outside of academia at the end of the PhD. This is partly down to the fact that a PhD is a very specialized degree, which leads to an extremely small pool of available jobs. So you either have to be incredibly lucky and land of one of those very few jobs, or take a step back and despecialize yourself into a myriad of possible jobs. Fortunately, the skills that you earn as a PhD student are quite transferable, so this transition can be made without too much pain. However, I still consider this to be a slight drawback. And this is because you have spent so much time in specializing yourself and be at the forefront of your subject. And then you have to discard all of that, or at least part of that, and take a step back to match the request from the job market. So there you have it, the five things I don't like about being a PhD student or doing a PhD at large. I'm still quite enjoying the path that I've chosen for myself, but I felt that this video had to be done to counteract that radiant bouquet of positivity that I sent out in my last video. And what do you think? If you're a current PhD student, then is there anything that you quite dislike that I forgot to include in my list? If you're a prospective graduate student, is there anything you're quite scared of that I didn't mention in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, if you have any question, you can leave it in the comments down below or reach out to me on social media. There is my Instagram handle in the channel description and I will look forward to hear from all of you. Until then, Goodbye.